Being uh, 7 o'clock, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bosfus. Here. Commissioner Baker. Here. Commissioner Bauer. Here. Commissioner Collins. Here. Commissioner Gary. Here. Commissioner Lynn. Commissioner Twardy. Here. Uh, Commissioner Twardy. I make a motion to excuse Commissioner Lynn. Support. Support. It moves forward. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. I'd ask those with uh, cell phones if they would please um, put them on uh, vibrate or silence them and turn them off. That would be appreciated. Thank you. Just wanted to mention too that uh, I'm sure all of us have uh, seen in the news media the devastation that occurred uh, in uh, Texas and Louisiana with uh, the aftermath of uh, Hurricane Harvey. Uh, I think we just uh, try and Keep those people that are involved and residents in those areas in our, in our thoughts and prayers, and we thank you for that. Uh, item number one is the 2017 Garden of the Year Award, and we'll have uh, City Manager Turner and myself. We'll go to the, uh, the podium in the front, and then um, we'll call up a few, a few people. Thanks. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners, and community. We're very pleased tonight to uh, again present the Garden of the Year Program Awards to those individuals who, uh, who have received this award and who have beautified their properties. Certainly, we know that this type of property improvement takes a lot of energy, um, takes a lot of commitment, and so uh, we recognize that it really lifts up neighborhoods across the community and uh, leaves a significantly beneficial impression on the entire community. Uh, very pleased to present our first recipient, Edie and Jerry Reno, at 1515 West 24th Street. Um, the next following set of pictures are of their property. I uh, certainly appreciate their efforts, and I would like to present them with a certificate as well as a a gift basket which uh, has been prepared by the city and the EDC. Oh, uh, looks like they're not here with us tonight. Uh, next we have 311 Sova Street, Jim Johnson. Uh, the next six pictures are of this property um, which has been improved throughout the season. Very beautiful landscaping. Uh, looks like we are also not, um, do not have them in attendance tonight, but again, appreciate their efforts for beautifying their property. And lastly, we have the St. James Episcopal Church at 533 Bingham Street. The next five pictures are of that property. And we do have somebody here tonight on behalf of the church to receive this award. Certainly appreciate their, uh, their efforts in that property as well. Dorothy Dansdell. And I just want to thank Selden Collins and Cal Woodard and Hillary Gailey, who also are on the weeding team.
Thank you. Our second item, uh, presentation by the Downtown Development Authority on the beautification efforts in the area. And at this time, we'll have uh, Justin Nepper, the uh, Downtown Development Director, uh, to introduce a few people. Justin. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. <clears throat> I wanted to quickly run through a few things that the Downtown Development Authority has been working with in partnership uh, with the city. And uh, a few years ago, actually for many years, we had a, a lady named Becky Botchel who worked as the beautification uh, staff person for the city. She retired a few years ago. She had worked many years uh, very hard on behalf of the city. And uh, since she left, we were kind of scrambling to figure out how to make sure that we were taking care of all the different uh, downtown gardens and properties as well as all the city uh, gardens and properties throughout the business spur and even in places that I, I uh, didn't even know existed and so uh, this year we th this spring um, I met with the uh, city administration and uh, we talked about how we could kind of partner together and have uh, some some people some staff people that we usually hire seasonally uh, to work uh, both jointly on DDA gardens and parks as well as all throughout the city and um, there was a master gardener course that was offered in town and we uh, reached out to Tracy Menard uh, she's a uh, works at the um, high school and uh, she had just completed the master gardener course and she came on board and helped us out through this summer and was a, a huge asset along with a program that the ISD offered um, to give us, uh, I think we had six, uh, between six and eight high school students that worked in uh, conjunction with her as well as a young lady named Alicia Ross who is a para-pro out of Rudyard. And uh, between uh, Alicia's team of high school students and Tracy's direction and oversight and a lot of hard work on Tracy's part, uh, we, I think, completely transformed many parts of both downtown and throughout the city. Um, and. Uh, made a lot of progress going into next year and years to come. So I'll have Tracy come up and chat a little bit about it. She has some pictures and kind of will run through a lot of the city properties and downtown properties. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Grace. Good evening. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so this was fun. Um, going through the, um, the Master Gardener um, certification was enlightening. And um, hooking up with with Justin and all the needs of the downtown area. So we tackled, is this just gonna show up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. um, so we went everywhere, um, even though this is for the you know, DDA in downtown, there was a lot of gardens throughout the entire Sioux that need a lot of attention. Um, these are just a couple before and afters that you can see some of the, some of the gardens were completely overgrown. It wasn't just a spot weed and a lot of our gardens um, on, along the business spur, each one probably took a full day of just gutting them. So they, they've been neglected. Um, some hardcore gardening uh, needed to take place. Uh, some of them have a lot more vegetation than others. Some of them look pretty sparse now, but I know with some breathing room that they're all gonna fill back out for next year and look pretty spectacular. Uh, ones we didn't know, that Justin didn't know existed, uh, we have Project Playground that looked like this, uh, the sea of weeds. Um, and this was all in great intention with different people sponsoring and adopting various gardens, various things were planted and then just kind of left. Um, for a lot of years and so we went through and cleaned them out um, I know and I'll introduce the girls here in a second they were very instrumental and none of these are done done because they're constantly works in progress and then we finally got to the downtown area and tackled some of the gardens so this is one pet project between uh, 906 and uh, national office cleaning it up thinning it out and then making it a little bit more attractive and again um, part of our goal is to get more seating not just seating sorry but seating with tables you know for people to be outside eat their meals outside tourists even employees in the downtown area so hopefully that will be in next spring as we incorporate some seating uh, lots of little just little gardens that jump out at you that are hidden that you don't even know are there but needed a lot of attention and work all the stuff that lines the sidewalks um, 
there were some great little pocket gardens it's down through the farmer's market next to um, the old back door um, 313 um, lots of little places um, that got some some good love this year and signage and that's another goal is to put some signage in some of these gardens uh, that's part of the education of teaching people what is native and what grows and what's good um, Again, here is a great example of some sponsorship that we had um, within the community, trying to partner the right people up with the right gardens to make some good things happen. But again, this needs to be further developed as we move forward if we're going to talk about sponsorship of gardens um, because of the, the turnover with volunteers and the buy-in. So you might have a great group one year and then the next year. So again, um, trying really hard to work on the vocabulary of what that looks like and putting it down in writing about what it means to sponsor, what it means to um, adopt a garden and the work that your, your various volunteers are gonna sign up for or what they'd like to see happen in their community. And that's just a small list of the volunteers that we had working. Alicia with her team of Dan, Zane, Adam and Jacob. Uh, today we have Elena. And Mana, ladies. Um, our AmeriCorps Vista member, Tyler, who just finished his year of service, uh, and my, my daughter, who I employed. <coughs> Fallen told um, that she was helping, so. <laughs> but she was awesome. Um, and again, awesome, because these ladies were there a ton, and they helped gut gardens. I didn't need to watch over them and they were awesome. So I, I'm very much appreciative of all the folks that we had uh, taking on some of the, the legwork. And this is just a couple of pictures of, of them in action. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tackling Project Playground. We didn't look like this when we were done. Uh, along the business spur. A lot of these big projects were really daunting, uh, and then that was our AmeriCorps member. Um, and so anyway, all these gardening projects led to lots of other conversations and farm projects. I know I'm going to be partnering with Mr. Wires, because um, again, part of the beautification projects you know, is making everything look beautiful, so we're going to beautify his garbage cans. <laughs> <laughs> some, some art projects over the summer, getting ready for next summer. Um, a lot of these gardens are still going to have a lot of work done on them um, into the fall months, getting ready and cleaning them up for next spring, uh, splitting some bulbs, moving some plants around, trying to fill in some of our dead space, um, getting it all ready for next year. Let me, let me just say on behalf of the city and certainly the commission, um, it's a huge undertaking, a tremendous uh, example of um, goodwill and young folks uh, getting involved because that's that's not an easy task and um, this was not an easy these, task no they're there <laughs> I'll tell no, you it, it's difficult and those things were built with the best of intentions and then as you say volunteers yeah. go away and they kind of get forgotten and in one year like this year with the rain and you start clipping stuff and all of a sudden the stuff that's clipped all of a sudden grows again and it's uh, overwhelming so Mm -hmm. um, really a lot, of, a lot of kudos to the folks that continue to do that. If you have a plan to continue that kind of growth uh, with, with students and young people. And to organize it. Coordinate, yes. that, that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your efforts. Thank, thank the, the students that are here for their efforts and uh, the ones that couldn't make it. We, we certainly like to um, really are. Thank you to those folks too. And thank you to Justin. I know yes. you worked hard on yes. getting the no right question. people together and resources. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's really right. I, I just had one more person to mention uh, who Tracy worked with a little bit, and that's Mrs. Volick. She uh, lives over on R Riverside Drive, I believe, and uh, this spring she stopped by my office and said uh, she really wanted to see the gardens uh, at Riverside Cemetery fixed up, and sh she said she remem remembers back when it was Protestant and Catholic and she was trying to figure out if she could work on the side that she wasn't uh, um, part of. And she ended up 
uh, taking all the flowers uh, that we had provided uh, and uh, planting both sides of Riverside Cemetery, both entrances uh, herself, and then uh, worked to keep them up. And so I really wanted to say thank you to her. Hopefully she's listening. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks. you again, and thank her. Okay, um, item number three, public comment on scheduled agenda items. Any person may reserve time to speak on an agenda item not to exceed three minutes per person. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on an agenda item? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item number four, the consent agenda. Assistant City Manager, Troyer. A minute approval. One, approval of the minutes of the regular City Commission meeting of August 21st, 2017. Recommended action is to approve the minutes of the regular City Commission meeting of August 21st, 2017. Item two, acceptance of the minutes of the following boards and commissions. A, Brownfield Redevelopment Authority of August 8th, 2017. B, Community Services Board of August 29th, 2017. C, PEHP DPW Unit of August 17th, 2017. D, Police and Fire Pension Board of July 19th, 2017. E, Sault Ste. Marie Housing Commission, July 6th, 2017. And F, Zoning Board of Appeals, August 17th, 2017. Recommended action is to accept the minutes of the various boards and commissions. Item B, appointments and resignations. One, reappointment to the PEHP DPW unit. Recommended action is to reappoint Bruce Boger and Kristen Collins to the PEHP DPW unit for a terms to expire November 18, 2019. Item C, communications. One, from Community Action Human Resource Authority. MDOT Project Authorization 2017-0124-P1-R2. slash Recommended action is to authorize the city manager and city clerk to execute MDOT Project Authorization 2017-0124-P1-R2, Fiscal Year 2017, Section 5311, Operating Formula Grants for Rural Areas Program. Item 2 is also from the Community Action Human Resource Authority. MDOT Project Authorization 2017-0124-P3. Recommended action is to authorize the City Manager and City Clerk to execute MDOT Project Authorization 2017-0124-P3, Fiscal Year 2017, Section 5310, Enhanced Mobility of Seniors and Individuals with Disabilities Program. Item 3 under Communications is from Jason McLeod. Installation of mid-block street light. Recommended action is to approve the installation of a mid-block street light as requested by Mr. Jason McLeod. Okay, thank you. Is there a commissioner that likes something further explained on the consent agenda? If not, uh, Commissioner Bauer. So move that we pass the consent agenda. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Item 5, Special Orders of Business. A, approval of the 2017 Blight Elimination Brownfield Plan. Okay, thank you very much. So city Manager Turner. Thank you, Mayor Bosmus. As commissioners are aware, the City Commission took action at its January 3rd regular meeting to condemn the structures at 606 Eureka Street and 629 Magazine Street. Thereafter, the City of Sault Ste. Marie assumed ownership of these properties after they were deeded over to the City by Chippewa County following the foreclosure process through a partnership in which the County agreed to forego an estimated $9,000 in tax recovery funds. At that time, it was noted that the City maintains a local site remediation revolving fund which receives monies from previous brownfield projects and which was projected to maintain a balance of approximately $136 thousand two hundred dollars as of June 30 2017 at that time it was further noted that these funds may be made available to support the demolition of the structures at these properties under public act 381 of 1996 being the brownfield redevelopment financing act throughout the summer city administration has further researched the utilization of this fund and has developed the included 2017 blight elimination project brownfield plan which if adopted by the city commission would permit the use of local site remediation revolving fund monies to support the demolition of the structures and the completion of project activities. As noted within a presented plan, activities of both properties to be undertaken would include utility disconnections, 
the assessment and abatement of asbestos, lead and cadmium testing, demolition and all related and qualifying activities with total project cost not being expected to exceed $45,000. City Attorney Canelo has confirmed that the plan as drafted meets the requirements of Public Act 381. The Brownfield Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sault Ste. Marie reviewed the 2017 Blight Elimination Plan at a special meeting it held on August 22nd and unanimously approved the adoption and implementation of the plan contingent upon approval by the City Commission. Relatedly, notices advising local taxing jurisdictions and the community of a public hearing on the consideration and potential adoption of the plan by the City Commission have been duly distributed. If the City Commission adopts the included resolution and approves the plan, the structures at both 606 Eureka Street and 629 Magazine Street would be demolished and the project substantially completed within the next several weeks prior to the onset of winter. On a closely related matter, as the process of removing the structures has reached the point where an RFP to remediate the asbestos and demolish the structures is currently issued, City Administration will soon be evaluating bids for structure demolition. As commissioners are aware, the city's purchasing policy dictates that bids for projects exceeding $10,000 are awarded by the city commission. In this case, though, city administration respectfully request that the city commission authorize the city manager to select the successful bidder meeting specifications and that is qualified after bids are received through the established bidding process for project activities. This is being requested due to the fact that this would provide city administration the ability to award this work shortly after September 13th and thus provide one additional week for contractors to mobilize and complete project activities this season. Accordingly, there are four recommendations that accompany this item. The first, that the City Commission hold the duly scheduled public hearing on the 2017 Blight Elimination Plan. Secondarily, the City Commission adopt the included resolution as presented, which defines the plan as a public purpose. Thirdly, that the City Commission authorize the City Manager to award the work associated with site remediation and structure demolition as presented and proposed by City Administration. And fourth, to authorize City Administration to increase general fund expenses as necessary for project completion with offsetting revenues to be derived from the local site remediation revolving fund. And just one further note on the fiscal effects, the budget amendments would be authorized to incur project expenses to the general fund with reimbursement and transfers in being received from the Brownfield Authority Fund, Fund 242, for project expenses. Additional action would include the removal of the $30,000 budget in the line item in the Brownfield Authority and would be reflected with the adjustment to the transfers between funds. As noted previously, however, this would uh, be the utilization of local site remediation revolving fund monies uh, for project completion in accordance with Public Act 381 and ultimately would not uh, create a negative impact on the general fund. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Okay, thank you. At this time, we would hold the uh, duly scheduled public hearing on the uh, 2017 blight elimination plan. Is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. The, um, there are three recommendations in discussion with the city attorney. Those are three separate motions. This is, uh, Commissioner Gary. I would make a motion that we adopt the included resolution as presented. Support. It's been moved and supported. Are there any questions? Uh, Commissioner Twardy. Thank you. Uh, so I have, a, I, I have a question about how does this fund gain money? So once we transfer money out of this fund in purpose of demolishing these, these properties, how do we resupply this fund? City Manager. Thank you for that question, Commissioner. Uh, the fund receives monies from past brownfield projects that have been completed. Uh, for example, in the future, the brownfield project that was approved by the City Commission recently for the Dollar General Store will eventually uh, result in tax captures to the fund. So the monies that are included within the fund are from uh, all local projects, from local millages, and the amount of money that can be captured into the fund under Public Act 381 is equal to either the cost of the projects and approved activities under the brownfield uh, plans that are adopted or the uh, five-year capture period, whichever is less. 
Um, so with past brownfield projects that have been completed, monies have been generated into the fund. And through this project specifically, there would not be a future capture for millages into the fund. However, it is the ability, there is an ability of the city for brownfield, for brownfield projects to capture funds um, for periods of time exceeding the amount through which developers are reimbursed. Okay, thank you. And then one follow-up mm -hmm. question to that. Once these properties are demolished, do then these properties, are they available for brownfield redevelopment? Right, so currently, thank you for that question, Commissioner. The properties are owned by the city of Sault Ste. Marie, and the most likely course of action that may result from this would be um, the disposition of the property to adjoining property owners. Okay, so then is, if let's just say the adjoining property owners then purchase the property, are they available to apply for Brownfield re redevelopment funds? Uh, not under the current plan. The plan is restricted for the demolition and assessment of the properties. Okay. Um, and that is because the city of Sault Ste. Marie is recognized as a core community, which is able to avail itself of certain mechanisms under Public Act 381 for blight remediation. Okay. So new construction would not fit within the scope of the blight remediation activities. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Collins. Um, I can reference to the uh, city purchasing policy, which dictates that anything exceeding ten thousand dollars goes to the commission. By basically approving this, we're giving the um, administration to the ability to actually do that. Is that something that is typically done, or is this the first time that we've done that, or how does that process work? This this isn't the first time, and because of the short window, as has been explained, uh, we'd have to we could have a special meeting and and discuss it and act on that, but. Um, this has gone on for some time. I think uh, uh, we dealt with this uh, bladed property back uh, last was it last summer. Um, so we, with this winter coming on, we want to have make sure that's taken care of. So we leave it in the hands of the administration. They will report back to us at a meeting um, on on the uh, results. And then the results would show the bids and so forth, and why yes. you actually picked the yeah. Same measure. Uh, thank you for that question, Commissioner. If this were to be approved by the City Commission, we would issue a formal report to the City Commission at the, um, at the next meeting, after which the award would be made, and also provide a status report once these structures are demolished, if it is the Commission's pleasure, of course. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Anyone else? We have a motion to support. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bospis? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Commissioner Gary, to Make a motion to authorize the city manager to award the work associated with site remediation and structure demolition as presented and proposed by the city administration. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And three. Make a motion to authorize city administration to increase general fund expenses as necessary for project completion with offsetting revenues to be derived from the local site remediation revolving fund. Support. It's been moved supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Twardy? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Okay. Motion carried. Thank you. City Manager. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just, I would be remiss if I were not to thank uh, the significant efforts of the department heads and the EDC and Brownfield Redevelopment Authority and uh, code enforcement, which went into the process of evaluating the properties, uh, taking it through the formal process, and uh, um, making this happen prior to the onset of winter, as well as the partnership with Chippewa County. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Item six, communications is from the, A is from the Community Services Board. Approval of youth recreation program funding for fiscal year 2017-2018. Thank you, uh, city manager. <laughs> Thank you, mayor. On this topic, uh, in discussions with the city attorney, I would like the city commission to note that because my wife serves on the board of Girls on the Run, I have not been involved with the distribution of the monies. Although I can discuss the structure of youth recreation program funding, I uh, will defer to Director Wires on this topic. Okay, thank you. 
Evening, Dan. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Youth Recreation Program funding. This uh, is one of the larger items, uh, more important items that the Community Services Board does tackle each year. And certainly, as you know, when we went gone through the budgeting process, this uh, program, um, since the city doesn't have a true recreation programming component of the recreation department, this is serves as a as a one of those items where these folks can provide recreation services, and the funding and is made available by the city commission. This year, the we had ten uh, youth recreation program funding applications received. Uh, the Sioux Bike Group, who has been here in front of the City Commission, they uh, did not submit and said that they'll be ready for it next year. So we had 10 uh, attendees, and they gave a 5 to 10 minute presentation. And this year we made it a little bit easier for all of them. We made an online fillable form out. Uh, some of them took advantage of it, and we found out that some of it would print, some depending on the, the printer they had. And the Community Services Board has over the years had meetings that have lasted from roughly at least three to six hours to debate these. And this meeting uh, was necessarily not an exception uh, because it was roughly about a three hour meeting. And they discussed, they debated, tweaked, reviewed, compromised, and came up with a recommendation for all 10. And of the 10, all 10 of them did receive funding. And the thought line, uh, and it was all unanimous by the committee and uh, as I mentioned, every group obtained funding. Uh, again, as, as we started last year, it's all reimbursable, so they must spend. And it's reimbursable by the city. And certainly the items that are in front of you, uh, for instance, a lot of them are supplies or for Little League, ba balls, bats, things of that nature. So it's specifically tied to an amount, and it's certainly an amount based on a lot of the criteria that they gave. And the Community Service Board uh, s uh, spent a lot of time, went through it, and certainly um, I give them a lot of credit for spending a lot of time on this. So their recommendation is to, to fund the 10 youth uh, programs as it's been submitted to you, and I certainly would uh, support their recommendation, and this would fulfill a budget item of $40,000, which the Commission has um, provided that funding for this. You want to name the, go through the... We can certainly go through the mayor. Sure. The first one was Hiawatha Skating Club, uh, $5,600 for ice time credits at the Polar Community Building for ice skating. Sioux Area Lacrosse, $2,000 for equipment, uniforms, and officials. Black Dragon Martial Arts, $3,300 for equipment, uniforms, program supplies, and training seminars. Girls on the Run, $2,000 for coaches training, CPR and first aid, uniforms, curriculum materials. Sioux Girls Softball, $1,900 for safety helmets, face shields, and uh, potentially even a pitching machine. Sioux Theater Project, $3,000 for instruments, music stands, instructor fees, and performance shirts, which is basically like a uniform. Girls and, boys, girls and Boys Club, $3,000 for supplies and equipment. Sioux Michigan Hockey Association, $6,000 for ice time credits at Polar Community Building. Sioux Soccer Association, $5,200 for portable scoreboards. Three tier bleachers and miscellaneous supplies for the field. And finally, Sioux Area Little League, $8,000 for benches, work trailer, Bats, mitts, diamond dust, and catcher's gear. So when, the, when these folks, um, the commission approves this, these folks submit uh, reimbursable, they supply receipts based on what you approve this evening and then get reimbursed for that. Okay, thank you. You're uh, welcome. Commissioner Twardy, I think we'll start with yeah. you. There's the liaison. Yep, thank you. Yeah, I am the liaison to the board. And, and uh, uh, Dan, Dan's right, this is the big meeting of the year and the people that sit on the board don't take this lightly. They come in and they've already done a lot of their homework on what their wishes are, but each one of them are will, willing to discuss, um, reconsider, and then come to a unanimous decision, which I was really impressed with this year. There was not anyone who didn't feel like they were heard or their wishes were 
um, also satisfied. When you have 10 groups that come and you only have $40,000, it's really difficult. You want to, because they all come with the, these very important needs to be able to supply community youth recreation to our community. And, and it's not just with uh, recreation. I mean, you have uh, Sioux Theater who also provides a different form of recreation for children. And I think it's important to listen to all of them and uh, take everything into consideration. And even uh, the Boys and Girls Club this year, they were new coming and asking for funding. And um, they, he had requested a lot more than what he was awarded um, because some of the things he was asking for, we, we, we don't make, pay for salary. That's one of the things that the taxpayers do not pay for. But we can help supply your, your program with equipment and supplies to help get you through so that kids can join the program. So I think they did a really great job and they, they listened to everybody and heard everyone really well and and I'm, I was very satisfied. I called Oliver the next day and I said I, I think that when Dan puts in the recommendation I, I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised that they were able to award something to each one of the groups. Wait, uh, Commissioner Gary. I was just going to echo uh, Commissioner Twardy's comments, and I wanted to commend Dan and the Community Services Board for uh, their improvements to the process. I think there's a lot more accountability, and it's nice to see other groups coming forward, and, and uh, all of the comments that I've heard from the public has been positive uh, uh, looking at the funding. So I think you're doing a great job, and I think uh, this is one of our highlights is being able to award to the Community Services Board $40,000 to the community kids. So thank you. Commissioner Baker. Yeah, I just have a few questions since this is my first go around with this. Um, one, you said that it, you don't pay for in, like instructors or salaries, but then for the theater it says instructor fees. Is that different? Yeah. Oh, like. We can get into it, but I think it's more like f fees, like maybe for some training or some reimbursables to them, the way that I understand that as well, but not necessarily at, like wages uh, and that sort of thing. Okay. And then, too, the, for the ice time, can you explain how that works? Because that's 11000 That's a good chunk between the, the, the Hockey Association and the Hiawatha Skating Club um, for ice time. How does that work with the polars? So. Uh, Mr. The, the what we have done in the past, it's a it's a reimbursable, but it really it's uh, it's basically they're they're paid in ice time credits, and normally it's done at the end of the season. So basically, they have to you know they, it's not something where they can take the ice time and go to another arena. So they're based on their usage. They use it usually at sometime in February. That time, basically, they rent the time from the city, and it just comes off their bill more or less. It's just deducted. So it's not. Uh, last year we did one where we did it a little bit differently, but this year just comes off their bill at the end of the year. So it's credited towards their account. Did you? Thank you. Commissioner Twardy. Thank you. I, I could elaborate on uh, both of those. For As far as the Sioux Theater Project is concerned, what you're looking at when you're saying instructor fees, mm -hmm. when they hold shows like they just held, um, I think, The Wizard of Oz, or uh, so, so they petition Walt Disney to right. try and, and hold a program, and it, it costs them at a minimum so two thousand dollars just to get the, the music and stuff like yes. that. Not yeah. the instructor. no instructors. The it's it it's for the licensing yeah. fees, yeah. and then um, if uh, Dan was explaining it, so basically the ice credits is th so they're renting ice from us, and then we're giving them the ice is in a credit. Does that make sense? It just not really okay. You know. I mean, <laughs> maybe to add in to it, the, the Hiawatha Skating Club rents with the city roughly 30000 dollars of ice from the city. So this helps to offset some of that, okay. and at the end of the year that would reduce sense. some of their bill. Same with Sioux Michigan Hockey, same thing. Okay, that makes more sense the way, yeah. Okay. Thanks. And if, the, if I can add one more thing for the commission as well, I know it's in the spreadsheet, for, so for the folks... Um, at home and the folks here too, that uh, of the f of our funding is forty thousand dollars. But when the, on the spreadsheet the request was for eighty four thousand one hundred twenty five dollars, so it was over double. Mm -hmm. That's if everybody was to get what everything that they've asked for. So really, it was almost double. And 
a lot of this they spent the time to go through and trying to split up 40,000 when they're asking for 84 and trying to be fair. Um, I, I think they spent a lot of their due diligence looking at this and they did question a lot of these things too and they really um, right down to the officials, how much they get paid, how much they, you know, how much they're fundraising. We did talk about the, the beautification aspect of it and uh, some of them couldn't do on the beautification day. So the fact that, um, but they will be beautifying and doing some things. So there's a lot of good things that happen as well. But I want to bring that number to you. Anyone else? Uh, Commissioner Collins. Actually, I believe Dan just answered the question because I had a question on the spreadsheet. So for 2016, 2017, the request was for $66,103.15 and then we awarded 40,000, right? Correct, okay. last year, and, and it's- 84,000 this year, and we awarded 40. Correct, and then it's a little bit of a time series. So you can go back to 2009, 2010, kind of show a little bit of what we've done and some of the groups that have come and have left, kind of gives a little bit of a history there. Gotcha. Oh, I guess if I read the line up there that said allocation and request, okay. I would have figured that out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're still waiting for a motion. Is that right? Commissioner Twardy. I'd like to make the motion. Um, would you like me to read each of no, the individual No, I think now that we've okay. read them. Okay. I so move that we uh, approve the distribution of funds within our packet. Support. So we've supported. Are there any additional questions? Uh, just a comment. Uh, I think everyone has pretty much said how much we appreciate the Community Services Board. I think, um, you know, anytime you're divvying out money and there's not enough money for the total amounts and there's a lot of give and take and uh, we certainly appreciate the, the process. Uh, it's, it's not easy and it does take some time, so, and certainly to uh, uh, Dan Waters and his uh, folks at administrative level that have to deal with those people on, on that basis all at that time. So thank you very much on behalf of the commission. Anyone else? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Gary? Yes. Commissioner Torty? Yes. Mayor Bosmus? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Bauer? Yes. Commissioner Collins? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. Okay, item number seven, uh, we are into the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Item A, under the city manager's report, would provide authorization for the execution of a contract renewal with Smith Sanitation for residential waste collection. As outlined within the prepared materials, as commissioners are aware, on October 15, 2012, the city commission approved a five-year agreement with Smith Sanitation for residential waste collection. The approved agreement commenced on February 4th, 2013 for the five-year term and would run through February 4th, 2018. The award of the agreement followed a competitive bidding process through which both Smith Sanitation as well as Waste Management submitted proposals for residential waste collection. Importantly, provision one of the executed agreement states that the city shall have the right to negotiate two separate three-year extensions with the contractor. Accordingly, city administration has reviewed the feasibility of extending this agreement by an additional three years through February 4th, 2021. From a service perspective, city administration has received a minimal number of complaints regarding the services provided by Smith Sanitation. Smith Sanitation has also proven to be responsive in addressing those concerns that do arise and are directed to my attention or the deputy manager's attention. Consequently, the current arrangement with Smith Sanitation is very compatible with the administrative capacity of the city as minimal time is spent on resolving waste collection disputes. For reference, the results of the competitive bidding process from 2012 have been included, along with the summary of prior costs from Smith Sanitation. It's important to highlight that fact, or that, the fact that provision 11 of the executed agreement permits Smith Sanitation to annually adjust tag costs based upon changes in consumer pricing. Further, the initial tag cost for a 32-gallon container from Smith Sanitation of $1.60 that was implemented through the initial execution of the agreement has increased per the contract to the current rate of $1.73 per tag. The current cost per tag of $1.73 for this container is still 5.2% below the base amount of $1.82 per container that was bid by Waste Management in 2012. In consideration of the cost effectiveness and strong service delivery provided through the current residential waste collection agreement, city administration has negotiated a three-year extension to this agreement for consideration by city commission. 
Crucially, in an effort to continue to keep costs down for our citizens and continue delivery through the agreement, Smith Sanitation has agreed to retain its 2017 price points through the 2018 calendar year with the next adjustment to come for early 2019 through provision 11 of the agreement. Under this extension, tags would continue to be sold in sheets of five at the same location currently utilized. And just a note on the first amendment to the agreement that's included within the agenda, uh, there is the change to the term of contract, which would reflect that one additional three-year term extension would remain if this were to be approved by the city commission. And also that the service rates uh, would continue to be adjusted in accordance with the consumer pricing index for all urban consumers, the U.S. city average. Uh, that would be adjusted to 2017 July rate when the pricing changes in 2019, and that would be an adjustment from the May 2013 uh, ratio, which is currently in the uh, existing agreement. And uh, certainly, as before, the 30-day notice for any pricing changes would be retained, and uh, the balance of the agreement would be, um, would be left intact. Now, the recommendation in front of the City Commission would be to authorize the City Manager to execute the First Amendment to the contract with Smith Sanitation as presented, and if it's the Commission's pleasure to approve this, I would also recommend that the Commission affirm the rates currently in place uh, and approve those rates for the extension. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Okay, thank you. The, uh, so the recommendation is a little bit different than the one that we have in front of us, but um, also uh, Smith Sanitation owners are in attendance if, uh, if we have any questions, but we do thank them for the service that they provide to the city. Um, and uh, agree with the city manager on uh, comments that he talked about as far as the, any problems they've, they've been um, very diligent and taken care of. Uh, Commissioner Collins. Yeah, I just had a question on the bid summary sheet. Uh, obviously, and this is probably to uh, the city manager, uh, obviously Smith Sanitation did a better job in overall um, hitting all the categories that we were looking for them as far as a proposal. But I have a question on option four. Um, the automated system. What, what is that? Uh, thank you for that question, Commissioner. I believe that that was one of the many options that was put into place during the bidding process in 2012. Um, it's my understanding that those would be um, bills that would be sent out by the contractor rather than the tag system. I do believe that the city attorney and deputy manager were involved in that evaluation process in case they have anything further to add to that. Does that, does that explain or do you want anything further? You, you, is that a, no, I'm good. Thank you. You're good? Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we need a, we have a motion yet? No. Uh, Commissioner Collins. I'll make the motion based on how Oliver read it. Mm -hmm. Support <laughs> city manager's recommendation? <laughs> there you go, yeah. Okay. Support. It's been moved, supported. Are there any questions? Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Forty. Yes. Mayor Bob. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Bauer. Yes. Commissioner Collins. Yes. Commissioner Gary. Yes. <laughs> Motion carried. Thank you. And uh, before the conclusion of the city manager's report, just wanted to provide a brief update on the uh, pedestrian and bicycle lane improvements that are being undertaken in conjunction and in partnership with Lake Superior State University. Uh, there will be a press release that is forthcoming next Monday uh, regarding the installation of the signage and the installation of the pavement markings next week. And later in the month of September, the additional pedestrian uh, instruments will be added in as well, such as the um, flashing beacons, as well as the uh, additional crosswalk enhancements. So certainly we appreciate everybody's patience with that. Appreciate the partnership with LSSU. Um, we know everybody's very eager to see the improvements. We have been waiting for the signage from the signage supplier to come in and uh, it did take a bit longer than we originally anticipated, but we're looking forward to the project proceeding. Okay, thank you. That, does that conclude the manager's report? It does, thank you, Mayor and Commission. Okay, thank you. Item number eight is a status report. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Item A under status report is an update from EDC Executive Director Holt regarding the U.S. Coast Guard vinyl program. Evening, Jeff. Good evening, Mayor, Commission, City Manager, Assistant City Manager. Thank you for the opportunity. 
As we all know, um, we undertook the uh, U.S. Coast Guard vinyl program to increase awareness of our, our Coast Guard partners. And I'd like to give you a brief update of, of what we've done and what we want to do in the, in the future. So far, we've contacted 274 businesses, and there are 64 par participating businesses uh, locally, 38 of which uh, provide discounts and promotions for Coast Guard members. We've uh, distributed nearly 70 vinyls, and these are the um, window vinyls that you see around town. Um, and uh, if anybody would like one to put in their business that hasn't got one, uh, please see me after the meeting. And that includes a commission as well. Um, the program was fully imp implemented uh, uh, just before August 4th, and we've uh, created a web page, uh, and we've launched it as a reference for what businesses are participating, and that is suedc.com slash USCG uh, for the folks at home, and a screenshot uh, of the web page is available there. The web page is built in a search functionality to locate uh, specific businesses, and one of the more exciting um, uh, developments are that um, our office is being now contacted by businesses uh, that we haven't reached out to yet or might have missed. And uh, it's really exciting for us that people are taking the initiative to take part in this. Future plans. Uh, short term is to uh, help the participating businesses showcase their support on their own websites and Facebook pages. And we're going to follow up with participating businesses after the tourist season ends uh, to see if the program uh, has been utilized. Long term, we'll reassess the entire program annually to see what can be approved upon and to make the program uh, even more successful. Uh, we will do another push to get more businesses to participate uh, in a month or two uh, to uh, new Coast Guard families moving into the area. And we will check and see if the vinyls hold up in the wintertime. And uh, if they don't, we'll get more to... Uh, um, to replace them. And again, um, uh, contact our website, uh, suedc.com slash USCG for any more information. Um, and I'd like to thank uh, for this program, of course, Justin from the DDA for getting it started, and uh, Tracy from our office, and of course, uh, Alex Robinson, our part-time um, person that uh, has taken this project and uh, really ran with it, and he's uh, done a really nice job. So. Great, thank you. Uh, any questions of Jeff, uh, Commissioner Gary? Not really a question, but uh, just a little statement. I wanted to thank Jeff and Tracy from the EDC. This is uh, part of one of our city commission goals, which was to integrate the U.S. Coast Guard families and service members into the community a little bit better. And we've had uh, several meetings so far, and, and this was an outcrop of one of those meetings, the vinyl program, which has been fantastic, and I've loved seeing the the vinyls all over town. Uh, we've also had uh, a lot of participation from LSSU, the schools, and uh, I don't know how many people we have on that committee, a uh, lot. And uh, it has been probably one of the most fulfilling committees I've been on because it's very positive. The Coast Guard is, is extremely professional and they appreciate uh, the committee very much. And they have a, a couple high-ranking people that are on the, the committee, and they've come with great ideas and participation. And we don't really realize uh, there are over 200 Coast Guard communities in the Sioux, and we don't realize the extent to which they actually volunteer, participate, and shop. And, I mean, they are all over the place, and they're talking about some of the things that they already do that we don't know about, and it's amazing. And through this program, we're trying to put together some better literature, I think, for uh, uh, Coast Guard families that come in. They come in typically in the summer months and maybe 20 families moving in every year. They don't know where the school is. They don't know where the churches are. They don't know where the uh, Community Services Board uh, <laughs> uh, award-winning uh, groups are. And uh, Tracy and Jeff and the EDC and all the committees have been putting a, a packet together of, of really good information and, and trying to really work uh, more closely with the Coast Guard. And I think one of the, uh, the other things that happened is the promotion of the Coast Guard open house during Engineers Day was the best attended ever, and that was because of some of the outreach efforts that the EDC had done. And I know that uh, Mayor Bospis and Jeff and I 
and Oliver were able to uh, grill out for the Coast Guard families on uh, August 4th, which is National Coast Guard Depreciation Day, and none of them got ill after that, they said, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did okay on the grills, yeah. so. Uh, the committee is good, and anybody that would like to participate, certainly we would welcome, because uh, they're a big part of our community. I mean, without, without a question, uh, you know, the over 200 uh, employees, as you might say, are uh, residents of the, of the Sector Sioux, and they are, you know, they have a large job. They are responsible for the Lake Superior uh, going uh, to Alpena on, in the Port Huron side, to uh, Traverse City on the Lake Michigan side. So it's, it's a large sector, and they continue to have uh, people coming into the community, leaving the community. It's a, normally a two, two to three year stint. Um, we certainly great to see them. We hate to see them go in many instances because they become very involved in the community, but we're trying to strengthen that relationship. We're trying to become a Coast Guard city. And um, uh, there's a few, I think there's only, what, two in Michigan? Um, and then we're trying to become uh, one of those cities. So um, this is a, is a great program. Thank you for your efforts. Um, Thank you for uh, the allowing us to The decals are, are great, and I would think most businesses would, would want to uh, jump on that and become part of that uh, uh, supporting effort you know great thank you uh, Commissioner Twardy yeah, thank you yeah I think it's really important to recognize one of our major employers in Sault Ste. Marie and and having the packet as as being married to a Coast Guard vet uh, moving into every community that we always moved into it was really important to have the packet of how do I get a hold of this person for this group or or even for the schools and we were approached and both of our businesses uh, now have them on the front doors and they've already been utilized. So we are doing, um, right now, I didn't know what to do, so I, we're just doing 10% right now, but if I'm finding that other businesses are doing more or you know, we're more than welcome to work with the rest of the community, but very proud Good. to do it. Good, okay, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Major. How to be under status reports is a reminder for the community that the Michigan Department of Transportation uh, in conjunction with city is holding a public informational meeting tomorrow in the city commission chambers starting at 5 p.m. until 7 p.m. regarding the I-75 business spur reconstruction project. Again, that is uh, being held by Michigan Department of Transportation on the I-75 business spur reconstruction project in the city commission chambers. Uh, 225 East Portage Avenue from 5 to 7 tomorrow evening. Uh, there will be a short presentation followed by a question and answer period. Thank okay, you. Great. And uh, lastly, as a status report, as the Commission is aware, uh, Dr. Finley and uh, Mr. Walworth are in attendance tonight from Blake Superior State University to uh, discuss um, a collaboration that has been ongoing with the Center for Freshwater Research and Education. Thanks. Good evening, good good evening Mayor Buspas, uh, City Commissioners, and everyone. Um, I want to let you know, for starters, that uh, President Mitchell is out of state. He looks forward to attending the next meeting of the City Commission. As such, it's my privilege to speak with you this evening. Um, as Oliver noted, uh, Vice President for Finance and Operations, Maria Walworth, is also here, so uh, can ask questions, um, answer, answer questions as well. I want to tell you about the Center for Freshwater Research and Education, and it was interesting to hear about the, the blight projects you guys are working on and that they were a, a year and a half old. We've been after this for a decade, and so we're very excited about the forward progress that is being made. Uh, back in 2016, we received an $8.8 .8 million capital outlay, notification of that from the state. So that's a big chunk of money, a big investment in this community. Um, that requires Lake State to raise uh, just a little less than $3 million, 2.95. The Sea Free Building, that's the acronym for Center for Freshwater Research and Education, is going to be an amazing facility, over 20,000 square feet, to be located in Alford Park next to Cloverland Hydroelectric Plant. So that will have state-of-the-art hatchery to expand upon the 40,000 Atlantic salmon that we already place into the Great Lakes modern research space, including a wet lab for sample prep, cleanup facility, flow through experimental mesocosms, I'll try to say that three times fast, analytical equipment and optics facilities, a fish health laboratory to process samples for the MDNR, and a discovery and education center displaying 
or highlighting regional ecosystems, animals, ongoing hatchery and research activities, sport fishing, hydroelectric power, the Upper Great Lakes region, interactive exhibits related to the history of the river, uh, Sioux Locks, and a host of, of other uh, aspects. Classroom space, residential suites for visiting scholars, um, and others during the summer, high-speed data capability, office space, incubator space. So I'll pass this page around. What I want to do is emphasize really the positive impact and advantages for Sault Ste. Marie. Revitalizing the Alford Park waterfront, increasing the enrollment for Lake State means more consumers for our city, uh, adding prestige to the university, right? We become the leader uh, with this facility in biology and chemistry research in the hub of the Great Lakes. Potential to expand aqua business, aquaculture in the EUP, and the Discovery Center and education component will be a wonderful addition for all that's along uh, our waterfront for school children in the EUP and a, another tourist destination in the summer. So Peter Mitchell and all at Lake State extend our appreciation to Mayor Bospas for immediately seeing the value of locating Seafree at the east end of the hydro plant and for the terrific collaboration with everyone at the city, especially Oliver Turner, Linda Bestista, Kelly Freeman. Uh, in fact, one of the reasons Peter says he accepted the appointment as president was to come back to the Sioux and that he's really excited about what Seafree will mean for Sault Ste. Marie and surrounding communities. Um, with any new construction, there certainly is additional planning necessary. The upside of new construction is a new building, right? Not renovating a building. Maury and I have some experience with that and the challenge is there. Uh, this is a new facility. Additional planning will certainly be necessary. And with the collaboration between Lake State, the city, Cloverland, and the DNR, uh, the end result is gonna be an outstanding center for freshwater research and education. So we're excited about what this can mean for the Sioux and appreciate the chance to report out at this juncture to you. And let me, let me just uh, preface uh, Oliver's remarks by talking about uh, initial meetings happened. Um, it was going to, you know, initially looked at the Cloverland facility. Uh, the state changed their mind on a new facility that they would still grant the funds. So the initial discussion was a possibility of Alford Park being, being that location helping with the, um, the wall that needs to be reconstructed yep. or uh, open to the public that sits there as a, mm -hmm. a fishing area pier. Um, so at this point, it, it's discussion. Mm -hmm. um, nothing uh, will happen until the commission, you know, makes a, uh, until the uh, manager makes a recommendation, the commission votes on, on the properties that might become the, uh, uh, you know, the opportunity for the sea free. But uh, going forward, uh, everything looks positive. Uh, engineering has to happen to even see if it can, it can handle the load. You know where, where they're talking about and I'm not exactly sure where that is so there'll be a lot of discussions a lot of meetings the Commission will be kept informed on going forward on how it's looking and, and there will be reports here but uh, it's, it's a great opportunity as, as you've said and we all think we feel for the uh, opportunity for the city to expand the tourist opportunities uh, and be part of that process and help Lake State grow uh, to become the university that we we yeah. hope they will become. You know, and Cloverland's will. excited about the move from the West End, and there were many issues and concerns. Yeah. That's actually part of the dam, even ensuring that facility at the West End, a real challenge. So the shift to the East End is a real positive move. Uh, Cloverland is very supportive, uh, including putting money behind the investigatory uh, surveys that need to take and place. Along, and along with the new building, growing the fish lab that's there with yes. new equipment, possibly mm -hmm. new renovation. And Absolutely, kind of stuff, yes. Um, moving forward, so it's just a win-win for everybody. Yeah. But going forward, those. We need to step forward carefully, of, thoughtfully. Yes, yeah. yes. Great. Okay. Sure. Thank Any you very much. Thank you. Questions? Thank you for coming. Okay, you bet. Okay, city manager, anything addition? Uh, just, just a couple of additions and appreciate that, that presentation. Uh, just that right now, um, given that the planning process is underway, um, the site layout would be something that is significantly assessed and considered. Uh, this would include the structure of any new construction, parking layouts, um, and the waterfront amenities, which would be included in the project. 
as the Commission is well aware of the current condition of Alfred Park. The intention of the collaboration, if it were to be approved by the City Commission, would be to help enhance waterfront access and, uh, and preserve access at Alfred Park uh, through potential um, fishing piers, possibly some type of platform for viewing the water, and, uh, and a remediation of the current condition of the dock wall, which adjoins the Alfred Park and Carbide Dock properties. Right now, the city is developing um, necessary instruments for due diligence to be performed on site um, for environment, environmental testing, soil borings, um, construction capacity, and really looking at those, uh, those types of barriers that would need to be uh, overcome for this type of project to move forward. Uh, on the water's edge, certainly evaluating how the improvements may impact uh, the future ability of the city to utilize the carbide dock to the east for those commercial maritime activities uh, that it previously served. And that is, uh, as well as the condition of the property being assessed by Smith Group JJR, um, which is being undertaken by LSSU and Cloverland. Um, right now, the intention would be for um, the park to be, uh, try, try to preserve it for waterfront access as mentioned, and possibly include uh, in the project a live work play concept where students may live on site and uh, also the um, classes and Center for Freshwater Research activities would be undertaken. So certainly as the planning process continues, uh, administration and partners will keep the City Commission apprised. Great. Thank you. Uh, that concludes the status report section of the agenda. Thank you, Mayor and Commission. Okay, thank you. Item number nine, our matters presented by the public. Is there anyone in the audience like to make a comment at this time? Yes, sir. If you'd identify yourself for the record, we'd appreciate it. Good evening, uh, City Commissioners and uh, Mayor Bosses and everybody else. Um, my name is uh, Bobby Selto. I'm the city's LSSU Student Government uh, li Liaison to uh, the City Commission, Mayor Bosses. Uh, a little bit about me, 21. I've uh, lived in the Sioux my whole life. Uh, yeah, at this uh, meeting here, I, I already see a couple of my old teachers and uh, some old workers, which is uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, I work at the uh, LSSU IT help desk up in the college. My dad works as a taxi cab driver here, and my mom works at the War Memorial Hospital. My uh, late grandmother actually worked at Foodland for, uh, I'm sure if you're old enough, you'll remember that place. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> My mission here is to continue the beneficial dialogue between both the institution of the city and Lake State, ultimately bettering our communities as a whole. I'm confident that this year will be very interesting for the both of us at Lake State. As you know, we have a very uh, ambitious and energetic uh, new president, Dr. Mitchell. And uh, for the city, I know this is a mayoral election year and uh, the 350th uh, anniversary of this historic city. I'm looking forward to interacting with all of you this year. I'm open for questions, and uh, if you want my contact information after this, I'll be sticking around. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bobby. Nice to meet you. Okay. Um, anyone else? Yes. Good evening again. I just wanted to quickly mention two events coming up in uh, just about two weeks. We have. The International Festival Race is taking place September 23rd. Um, I believe uh, we're expecting hopefully a couple hundred runners, if not more, uh, to, to run up to a half marathon. Uh, and then following that, Oktoberfest takes place from noon until 6 on, uh, on Portage. So it should be a, a good day on September 23rd, and then we prepare for Christmas uh, shopping events <laughs> after that. <laughs> yep, great. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Chief. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Evening, Chief Riley. Uh, I'd like to start first. I'd like to thank uh, Scott Brand and the Evening News for this weekend publishing a safety article that I sent them regarding back to school. I, I really appreciate that. I'm actually, uh, I've, I've stepped up to address another safety concern 
as the public may or may not know, at the request of the school district, the city's approved a new crosswalk, manned crosswalk at uh, Marquette and Minneapolis. That started today with the first day of school. Uh, we've already heard from the individual that's the crossing guard of a couple of close calls. Uh, it's a new location, might not be familiar to everybody, uh, but it was definitely needed with the number of kids that uh, cross right there in front of the middle school and the amount of traffic. And being the one driveway into that school, it's a very congested area, very dangerous spot. Probably could have used a crosswalk years ago. But uh, we're glad we've got that taken care of. <clears throat> uh, I want to give a reminder out to drivers that whenever the crossing guard steps into the street with that stop sign raised, you must stop. You cannot go through as soon as that crossing guard enters the street. He's the first one out there. He goes out before the kids and he's the last one to leave the street after the kids uh, are done crossing. You have to stop for that stop sign. If you do not stop, if you sneak through before the crossing guard is out of the street, that's a misdemeanor, technically an arrestable offense. Uh, fines in the state of Michigan, it's a $100 fine and or 90 days in jail. You could go to jail for 90 days for disregarding that stop sign. There, he's there for a reason, the safety of our kids. Uh, we have a lot of kids that use that crosswalk and rely on that crossing guard. So I want to remind everybody that you must stop. And you don't even have to be the driver. If a description is given to a police officer of somebody that disregarded the stop sign and went through the crosswalk, uh, vehicle description and a license plate, the registered owner is presumed under this particular statute to be the driver. The registered owner get the ticket. So we don't even have to have a traffic stop. Uh, I've already talked with some of the day shift officers and the captain on this. We're going to be closely monitoring this. And uh, because it's such a, a danger of people going through these crosswalks, uh, tickets will be issued. Traffic stops will be, be made and tickets will be issued. We don't want any kids going to the hospital. We don't want our crossing guard injured. Uh, we want everybody to get to school and back from school safe. I think maybe you can reiterate it because the, you were telling the commission earlier before the meeting started that um, he no sooner got past one vehicle and the vehicle came from behind and into the crosswalk. So he didn't even know it was there type of thing. So it's important that what you're saying is as long as the crossing guard is in the walk, nobody moves. No, you can't go through. And you know, just come a couple minutes earlier if, you, if you're in a hurry. Make sure you have enough time to make sure the stop is there because the safety is the number one reason. That's why we have the crosswalk. And I think it was uh, Commissioner Twardy that was part of that uh, concern that came initially. And um, it's important that uh, we protect the children. And it's wild for 20 minutes or so at the middle, I think it's the middle school or just at that stop sign at the middle school. Right in there. And they're going to the high school, they're going to the middle school, but there's a lot of congestion right there. If we need a uniformed police officer there during that time too, maybe might, might not be a bad idea. There may or may not be a uniformed police officer okay. in a squad car around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> <for a while. laughs> that may happen. Uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, I would ask all drivers, you're supposed to be aware of your surroundings. It's a new crossing, but you're supposed to be aware of all your surroundings and kid darts out between two cars, it's the same type of thing, but here you've got advance notice. <coughs> I would ask all drivers, treat that crossing as if it's your own child using the crosswalk. Now, that could be your child walking to school. Commissioner Twardy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I feel like discussions on this. So my son moved away two years ago, and I, he was still going to school here. So discussions on this, talk about government taking a while for progress to be made. And so the discussions but on this start, did start two years ago, and I'm so happy and relieved because maybe my mom sense can relax for at least two hours a day between 7 and 8 a.m. and 3 and 4 p.m. That never goes away. <laughs> yeah, my wife's true. <laughs> a bit older than you and my kids are grown. That never goes away. It never goes away. And thanks for coming up to discuss this. Uh, I think it, this is a very important issue and we need to make sure that these children are getting to school safe, safely. <clears throat> There is also uh, a lot of other schools that are also in session. I live on the same street as St. Mary's, and my husband and I noticed a lot of speeding down that road this morning. Um, I, I don't I have a really hard time with it because these kids are just trying to get to school safely, and that's our job is to get them there safely. And so just slow down just a little bit. 
you know. So, uh, so thanks for coming up to address this. On this meeting, we, we had the program that started the end of July. Uh, it's continuing. Uh, I'm getting very positive comments from the public, uh, including our engineer on her street. Uh, so it, it's been very effective. I'm very satisfied with the program. Good. Good. Uh, with regarding to crossing guards, I'd like to put a reminder out there. We are looking for a third crossing guard. Uh, it's an hour in the morning, hour in the afternoon. Um, we have two crossing guards, but I have one that's covering two spots right now. And he's having to hurry up and get to the second one to catch the kids. We are taking applications. They can get applications online there at the clerk's office, submit them to the clerk's office. If they have any questions regarding what does a crossing guard do, what's required, they can call me at the station or call the captain at the station. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Collins. Hey, Chief, what about the um, crossing walk up on Easter Day? Uh, going to Washington School there? At so Ryan the there? The the at, at Ryan? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. at Ryan. Yeah. How's that? You've got four lanes there, basically, right? So it's got to be like one of the widest sections. Yeah, yeah we have an experienced there. guard over there. Yeah. Crystal Ball. Um, that's been his intersection for a few years, so he's comfortable with that. Um, he's actually the one that's doing two intersections, two crossings right now. Um, I believe he does the uh, Marquette and trying to remember the time frames. I believe he does in Marquette. As soon as he's done there, he runs over and catches that one. I was just wondering about the, as far as both lanes of traffic having to stop when you go down the road. State law does not require, if it's separated by a median, does not require the other side to stop. Um, but I believe that's where the median ends. Yeah, the median actually ends closer mm -hmm. to like the, um, the, the little church there. Yeah, so everybody would be required to stop providing uh, where the crossing is and not separated by a median. If it was, you'd do two crossings. Um, if it's not separated, everybody both directions has to stop. That's what the law states. Thank you. We haven't heard of a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming just by your question, you've seen cars zipping through. <laughs> is that true? Because I want to look into it if it is. Yeah, I've, had, I've seen cars do that, yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else public comment? Okay, item number nine. That was nine. Item number ten. Matters pre presented by the city commission. City Com uh, commissioner Gary. I think a couple Saturdays ago, I had the privilege of uh, representing Mayor Bospis at the uh, Korean Master Korean Martial Arts Masters Celebration mm -hmm. in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and. Uh, do a welcome on behalf of the city of Sault Ste. Marie, and I was the only politician there, which was pretty cool. You didn't tell me there'd be 300 people there, though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there were people from all over the country and uh, some uh, Korean martial artists from Korea, who I think, who came over to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, as well. And uh, I thought I'd just pop in and, and uh, as designed to do the demonstration, but I stayed till 10.30. The, the people there were the friendliest, nicest, hmm. Uh, brightest, most hospitable people I think I've seen in a long time. And they had demonstrations. And I just wanted to uh, give kudos to Tina Fuller, who is the city assessor and is very active in the sport and has a school downtown now to teach kids the arts of uh, Korean martial arts. Mm -hmm. And she received a lot of awards that night, and she is a master. And I wouldn't mess with her, and she maybe is, should be the one that's here in the uh, <laughs> <laughs> commission chambers defending us. But she's very professional. Uh, she was very well respected there, and uh, a big part of that uh, sport. So I think that's that's good that she's uh, giving to the community. And uh, I was very impressed with the uh, whole celebration. So thank you for uh, well, thank you for doing that, over. and thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Commissioner Bauer. Uh, the next time you do one of those events, make sure you tell them I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to adjourn the meeting? Yes, I move that we adjourn this meeting. Support. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Aye. Thank you very much. We are adjourned. <laughs>